Welcome back to the weekend wrap-up show for NASCAR. Yeah, that's been a week. Uh, hi, Casey Campbell here. That's Nathan Solomon from, you know, the podium finish. You know, they host a show with some guy named Rob Tiongson, some guy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Uh, it's, and he also hosts some, some dumb show where they talk about, uh, you know, New York sports and how bad they are and all that. And uh, back in action today. They're back in action. That, well, no, well, mm-hmm. the bodies are, they're doing pretty good, but uh, you got the, you got the other teams and we'll, we'll not talk about baseball, but cause they're, they're not doing anything They're They're locked. That, that could be a long rant. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't get me going in that direction. Yeah. Let's not do that. Uh, cause I have a lot to say about that topic as well, but there's a lot, been a lot of news in uh, this week in NASCAR, of course, uh, obviously took the week off last week. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving. Um, but this is, uh, this is, uh, teams went back to work this week and there was a ton of announcements this week. There was a lot of announcements. Um, the PR guys are, they, they've been, uh, it's been quite busy here this last week. Yeah, they have been. Let's start with one of the biggest ones uh, to come across here. And probably I think the biggest announcement and pr- pretty much the biggest surprise of the week, um, Richard Petty Motorsports, they sold their majority stake to GMS racing um, to Maury Gallagher and that team. I know a lot of the details are going to be announced next week at the NASCAR hall of fame. But this is not the first time that uh, that that RPM was sold or something like that. I know that you know Andrew Merstein and Medallion Bank have been trying to uh, to sell their stake, which controls um, which controls RPM. Um, Richard Petty does not have the full control of the team, so just uh, for people that kind of don't know that. But overall, this is a it's a big announcement for GMS. They were able to acquire uh, the charter they need for the '94, and then. They also acquired the other one from uh, the two charters that RPM controlled. Yeah, I mean, just what you said, it was, it, it was a surprising announcement. Like, it, it was a surprising announcement, but it kind of wasn't a surprising announcement. Like, I know that uh, Richard Petty Motorsports, they've they've sold, um, I, I guess, stakeholders. Like, to, they, they've sold part to the team before. Um, they have been, I guess, they're, they're in that same Chevy alliance with, with RCR. And so when, when GMS came in, they were – I guess, kind of co-partners or, or, um, or just allies, I guess, if you will. So it's, again, it, it's surprising, but it's not surprising. I mean, I didn't really expect that GMS would, would kind of become uh, essentially a two-car team right now in the, in the Cup Series. But, uh, but right now, the understanding is that RPM will, will, will probably keep their, their, uh, their name and, and Jones will continue to drive the 43 car under um, a, a Richard Petty, um, a, a Richard Petty name for, for the meantime, but uh, I think we'll get we'll get further confirmation later. But yeah. yeah, big sale there, a lot of money, like nineteen million dollars. I mean, that just shows, like, I guess, how much um, uh, how much some of these prices in NASCAR really inflated over the past year. I mean, I think you know we'll talk about it a little bit later here in the show, but um, when you know the, the number that Denny Hamlin paid for hit for his charter for twenty three eleven racing, I think it went. It went the charter he paid last year is four million dollars. The charter he paid for this year is like thirteen million dollars. Like that's that's a lot of money. And Starcom, a team that got zero top tens in three full time seasons, just made thirteen million dollars off of off of, a, of what Denny said yesterday, a piece of paper. Absolutely. So more to come on that. It is also my understanding that Richard Petty will still keep his stake in in the team. So uh, more details to come. You know what the team name is going to be, what they're gonna what they're going to do, how they're going to operate. And there's also some other stuff that obviously will come out later on. Uh, but yeah, also uh, not the, not the only team. There's been a lot of driver announcements as well. Probably the biggest one there is uh, front row motorsports. Uh, they announced their 2022 lineup. Um, Michael McDowell in the 34, Todd Gilland in the 38 in the cup series. And then Zane Smith going to drive the truck. Yeah, um, big, big announcement there, and it's gonna be a, gonna be a huge jump coming up for uh, um, for for Todd Gillen going uh, going from truck to Cup without making any. I don't think he's made any Xfinity starts, correct? Nope. So yeah, big jump there, but we'll see if we'll see if he's cut out for it. I mean, he, he had a pretty good year in the Truck Series this year. He was the the best Ford in the Truck Series. I know there's not very many Fords in the Truck Series, but he was the best Ford in the Truck Series. Um, won Coda, contended at a few other races, ran up front at Watkins Glen. He's kind of turned into a, to a really underrated road course racer. I mean, he finished top five at all three truck series road courses and 
kind of this evolution of some of these younger drivers are that, that are coming up to the cup series is, is a common trait being that they're, that they're good polished road course racers. And I think that that's going to allow some of those guys to be able to kind of contend early on to win races, especially with the next gen car coming, which will, which will really level out the playing field. So when you, when you kind of look at some of these younger guys in the cup series, now Austin Sindrick, obviously he's moving up next year, uh, Chase Briscoe, and, and then now Todd Gilliland. I mean, three pretty good road course racers. I think that they'll be able to, to really compete uh, um, for, for top tens and, and maybe even a win here and there on, on some of the road courses. Um, you know, Michael McDowell, uh, he's, he's a good road course racer and front road motorsports has pretty good road course racing equipment. So I think it will be a pretty good fit for Gillen. It, it's their third, their third driver in three years there for the 38. So that, that's a little bit interesting, but uh, I, I like it. I know that they've been in, in some other in they had been in discussions with some other drivers for that role but but with the ties the family ties and, and everything I think it was probably um uh the best choice and and with his I guess his good relationship with some of the front row sponsors that was the other the other selling point for him in the 38 so be interesting to see how he does um obviously not com- uh, compared to some of the other teams not not as great equipment on ovals on, on some of the intermediates and everything, but we'll, we'll see how he does on some of the, some of the plate races and road course where I think he can be, he can be really competitive. And if you want more about, you know, more about the front row announcement, as, as, as you may have seen, I got the chance to talk with front row motorsports general manager, Jerry freeze, who went in, uh, went in all the discussions about what the, team, what the team did as uh, Nathan tries to fix his camera. Um, you're a little bit backwards upside down there. I have a little issue. Yeah, I, I can see that. <laughs> My apologies, guys. Well, well, Nathan fixes his camera. Of course, uh, of course, Jerry and I talked about a lot of the news surrounding Front Row Motorsports uh, the other day. Um, so go check that out on my channel. Um, lots of truck news. Um, lo- uh, lots of it. So uh, a couple rundowns here. KBM announces that Chandler Smith will be back in the 18 truck, of course, season he had two wins last year um pretty good um pretty good pickup for them uh first time that first time that kbm is going to have both their drivers back because the last few years they they changed them so good to see them back also on point motorsports announced that tate fogelman will be taking over the 30 truck this year got a chance to talk to him as well go check that out so so yeah it's uh, definitely uh, good moves there but uh, Hattori Racing also made some announcements. Uh, they're going to be having two trucks this year for the first time. Um, they announced Tuesday that Chase Purdy will be in the 61 truck. Uh, Bama Buggies coming on board for um, for all of the season. Uh, not yet known what who their crew chief will be yet. Obviously, that will be announced soon. And then also Tyler Ankrum will be in the 16 truck um, for Hattori Racing, of course, taking over for Austin Hill. Um, Luna, his sponsor that has been on his truck since his days at GMS will be the primary sponsor for 20 out of the 23 races. So the Tory racing, uh, is getting a little bit of a makeover, but, uh, a lot of interesting choices from the, uh, from the driver that's kind of raised some eyebrows. Yeah. I mean, uh, two kind of interesting picks there for a to, to field those two cars. And I mean, I think they could be really good signings, but they're also risks. I mean, Chase, both drivers have really kind of disappointed, um, you know, you know, last season with, 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 um, with GMS. And it's kind of interesting that, that, you know, with GMS cutting down to two or three trucks, they, um, you know, the, the two drivers that are really out here are, um, or two of the drivers that are really out are, are going over to Hattori and Toyota. So that's interesting there, but um, yeah, two risks. I mean, Tyler Ankrum has, you know, besides his one win in 2019, I think it was, um, you know, he's really been disappointing otherwise. I mean, he's been in good equipment. I know GMS did not have the greatest of years this year. Of course, Sheldon Green won a few races and, and Zane Smith ended up finishing second in points just because of, of his win at Martinsville. But overall, a down year for them. And it just Ingram is not, you know, he's, he's just not been he's not been very consistent. And and that's the same with with Chase Purdy. I mean, he's got some, I guess, some unpolished talent, if you will. And so I, I think that he you know, he, he's getting the second, both guys are really getting a second chance and, and maybe a final chance to really prove themselves and, and go out and win a few races this year. So um, again, interesting moves there by, uh, by Hitori, but they're, they're, they're both going to be in good trucks. And Toyota was of course the dominant manufacturer this season in the truck series. 
So I think there's there's no reason why they can both go out and, and have a good season and, and contend to win some races. Well, Satori decided to add a truck. Of course, um, they lose one with BMR, so they just added another Hattori truck. So good stuff there. Final driver news this week. Miguel Paluto was announced that he's going to run uh, three races for Junior Motorsports in the 88 car for uh, the races at Coda, Road America, and the IMS Road Course. So, uh, of course, Paluto will be back for three races in that car. So that's good stuff there. Some sponsorship news. Menards is back on with Ryan Blaney. And um, Austin Sindrick, they'll also help out with Harrison Burton as well. Um, you know, the Menards in there. Also Tootsie's that Nashville, uh, that Nashville, like, you know, na- staple in Nashville. They announced that they're going to be on the, with uh, track house and Daniel Suarez for seven races uh, this season, starting with the Daytona 500. Um, Hooters announced yesterday that Chase Elliott will be uh we just announced yesterday that they will sponsor Chase Elliott for the next um, for for the next three seasons with that nine car. Of course, Chase Elliott's contract runs through next year, but um, obviously they're going to probably get to work on that and try to you know resign him. And obviously we that's that's what the plan is. So that good stuff there. But the other announcement that I think I want to kind of mention. Uh, remember those Arca Wheelin, all those uh, all those uh, weekly series NASCAR Roots races. Well, they're going to be uh, going to somewhere else. Um, Flo, they announced this week that a lot of those races are now going to be on Flow Racing. Of course, uh, a lot of the, well, of course, Flow Racing is watches all different kinds of it. I just bought my subscription yesterday. So they also run a bunch number of USAC races. Got a chance to check out a USAC Silver Crown race earlier this uh, earlier this year at Toledo Speedway. Um, yeah, so fun stuff there. If you uh, like all kinds of racing overall, but what's that going to be like? Uh, you know, shifting all over to that. And we have a new partner now. Yeah, it's gonna be spending more money. I mean, just for uh, for your subscription, I might have to uh, dip in there and and, yeah. uh, and pay to watch the uh, um the NASCAR routes. But but yeah, I mean, I guess kind of an interesting decision. Not completely surprising with with NBC Sports. I guess downsizing, of, of course. I mean, the, the NASCAR routes had uh, a partnership with NBC Digital, NBC Gold, NBC Track Pass, that kind of system, but. Um, end of the year, uh, N- NBC Sports is basically downsizing. They're getting rid of NBC Sports Network, so all of their sporting events there will be will go over to USA Network. So I guess with that announcement, it's not surprising that, that they're switching over to Flow Racing, but it just kind of sucks that will be a little bit more of an expensive sponsorship. So, but yeah, I mean, I I think the, the move's fine. Uh, of course, they'll they'll still be select ARCA races on uh, FS1 next season, usually when they are on the same weekend as uh, a, a NASCAR national series at a NASCAR, yep. you know, national weekend, I like got at, at one of their tracks. So um, I think that's like, I think it's eight FS one races and then 12 yep. will be on flow racing or whatever. So actually I'm um, going to, I'm going to stop you there. So I was able to clarify this with ARCA yesterday. So um, the main ARCA races will be on FS one along with Mav TV. Um, the remaining races that aren't on FS one, they're going to be on Mav TV shown on there. And then all those races will be on the, what was essentially track pass now on flow racing. Uh, all the ARCA East races will be on flow racing along with ARCA West, the Wheeland Modified Tour, the Pinty Series, as well as the NASCAR Advance Auto Parts Weekly Series. So uh, good stuff there. Yeah, of course, that's also the home of the Chili Bowl, which gets going uh, next month. Uh, cannot wait for that. But anyway, that's a lot of news. There should be, there could be more next week. I know there's going to be, uh, there's going to be more announcements. And we're going to, and guess what? We'll be back next week. I'm not sure if it's going to be Nathan, but it could be somebody else. But well, I'll be here with, with somebody um, as uh, we get closer and closer to the, uh, to the beginning of the LA Clash, which is just 65 days away and only 79 days until the Daytona 500, uh, which gets going um, in February. So good Where stuff there. Going? Yes, I know. Yes. Um, all right. Well, Nathan, that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for joining me and thank you all for watching. And if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well.